I am the uh, scientist in charge of... Uh, I was the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This isn't science fiction. Deep under Yellowstone National Park, something ancient has begun to stir. A silent, steady rise, unseen by most, has caught the attention of scientists worldwide. Yellowstone is a unique place in the world. It's best known for its hydrothermal features, is the name we give to hot springs and geysers, steam vents or fumaroles. A dome-shaped bulge pushes upward, warping the earth like breath beneath a thin sheet. It isn't loud, it isn't violent, but it's growing. What does it mean? Really large eruptions at Yellowstone, so much material comes out, entire mountain ranges end up falling into the ground and essentially disappear. Could this be a harmless pulse in a living landscape? Or the quiet first note in a deadly overture? With every inch of uplift, a question grows louder. It would be very difficult for the United States to survive as it is now. Is Yellowstone warning us or simply reminding us that it never stopped watching? Yellowstone's sleeping giant, what makes it dangerous? Yellowstone is no ordinary volcano. You won't see a towering cone like Mount Fuji or Mount St. Helens. Instead, Yellowstone hides its fury beneath a calm, sweeping landscape. The trees sway gently, the geysers hiss and steam. But one of Earth's most powerful geological engines lies below the surface, a supervolcano. What does that mean? A supervolcano doesn't erupt often, but when it does, it can reshape continents, darken skies, and alter the climate for years. Rather than building mountains, these monsters collapse inwards after unleashing their fury, leaving behind vast craters known as calderas. Yellowstone's volcanic basin measures about 30 by 45 miles, an immense span capable of swallowing multiple cities with room left over. Beneath this vast caldera lies a powerful hotspot, where a rising magma plume has scorched the crust for millions of years. That heat fuels the park's geysers, bubbling mud pots, and steaming hot springs. This hot spot is restless. Over the last 2.1 million years, Yellowstone has experienced three major eruptions. The last occurred about 640,000 years ago and released enough ash to blanket large parts of North America. It wasn't just a local disaster, it changed the world. Since then, smaller eruptions and lava flows have shaped the region, but nothing has matched the scale of those ancient blasts. Still, the system is alive. The ground rises and falls. Geysers change rhythm. Seismic whispers travel through the earth like a sleeping beast turning in its bed. What makes Yellowstone so dangerous isn't just its size, but how quietly it moves. No dramatic smoke, no immediate panic, just subtle changes, rising land, shifting heat, and gases creeping from cracks. A volcano that doesn't need to roar to be heard. The dome is growing. USGS raises an eyebrow. Early in 2023, something unexpected started happening beneath Yellowstone's northeastern caldera. Instruments picked up a shift, slow at first, almost imperceptible, but the numbers didn't lie. The ground was rising, and not by a little. At first, it was just a few centimeters per year, well within Yellowstone's natural rhythms. But the pace began to pick up. By mid-year, certain areas were lifting at more than 15 centimeters annually. That's over six inches, double, even triple the usual rate. This wasn't the kind of thing that makes breaking news. But for scientists watching closely, it was enough to raise alarms. The U.S. Geological Survey issued an official update through the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. It wasn't a red alert, but it wasn't anything either. They called it an advisory, formally recognizing that something unusual was underway. The source? A mysterious dome-shaped uplift, a bulge, slowly rising from beneath the earth. It spanned about seven miles across, centered in the northeastern part of the park. This wasn't just a bubble of dirt. It was pressure, deep, ancient, and building. What concerned scientists wasn't just the rise's height, but its consistency. The uplift wasn't slowing. If anything, it was accelerating. It showed persistence and didn't match the usual background activity that Yellowstone has displayed in the past. Alongside the uplift came other signals. Minor earthquakes, small temperature increases in the soil, and changes in the release of volcanic gases, just enough to suggest something was brewing below. No one said eruption. No one panicked. But in the world of volcanology, you don't wait for panic to take notice. 
the land was sending signals. And the scientists, this time, were listening more closely than ever. Pressure below. Magma, gas, and swelling. Earth. To understand the growing dome, we must go underground, beneath the trees and soil, where rock bends and pressure builds. The Earth isn't solid here. It flexes, breathes, and occasionally pushes upward. That's what's happening now. Imagine the crust like the surface of a pudding. When something thick and hot stirs below, the surface bulges. In geological terms, that bulge is called a resurgent dome. It's formed when pressure rises beneath the ground, lifting everything above it in a slow, silent swell. So, what's creating that pressure? The most likely culprit is magma intrusion. Deep within Yellowstone, magma from a lower reservoir may be creeping upward, entering a shallower chamber. As it moves, it brings heat and gas, lots of gas. Gases like carbon dioxide and water vapor, once trapped in molten rock, are now escaping and expanding. That expansion acts like a balloon inflating. It doesn't need a lot of new magma to create force. The gases alone, once released, can dramatically increase volume and push on the crust above. The dome rises as a result. But it's not just magma. Yellowstone also sits atop a vast hydrothermal system, networks of underground water channels heated by magma. These superheated fluids can become trapped if mineral deposits seal off vents. As pressure builds within these pockets, it jacks up the land from below. Add this to the swelling magma chamber, slowly forcing a landscape upward. Interestingly, this isn't a smooth bulge. Ground-penetrating radar and seismic scans show that the dome has a complex structure. Some areas are softer, others more rigid. This means the forces beneath aren't uniform, shifting, pulling, and pushing differently in different spots. Surface readings now show slightly elevated temperatures right above the dome. Gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide also rise in small but measurable amounts. Together, these changes suggest an active, volatile, and stressed system. No eruption, not yet. But something deep below is moving, and it's not finished. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Tracking the uplift. Satellites, GPS, and sensors. How do scientists detect something as subtle as the ground rising by just a few millimeters? The answer is a network of exact instruments, constantly watching every shift, tilt, and tremor across Yellowstone's vast landscape. At the heart of it all is INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar. Satellites orbiting the Earth take radar images of Yellowstone's surface at different times. By comparing these snapshots, scientists create interference patterns that show exactly where the ground has risen or sunk. It's so precise that it can detect changes smaller than a dime. Over the dome, INSAR images show a striking bullseye pattern, a series of colorful rings indicating where the land is rising the most. The center glows with the brightest hues, showing the epicenter of uplift. Then there's the GPS network. Dozens of stations are anchored deep into Yellowstone's bedrock. These aren't your regular GPS devices. They track movement with millimeter accuracy in real time. They've revealed not just vertical rise, but horizontal spreading too. The dome isn't only lifting, it's stretching. Tilt meters add another layer. Think of them as ultra-sensitive levels that detect slope changes. As the dome rises, the land around it tilts outward, like a balloon pushing against its surroundings. Scientists note that the eastern side is rising slightly faster, possibly indicating uneven pressure or structural weakness below. Strain meters complete the picture. Buried deep in boreholes, they track how rock stretches or compresses. Right now, the rocks beneath the dome are under significant tension, pulled and cracked by forces pushing upward. Together, these tools paint a vivid picture. Yellowstone's surface is shifting, the ground is not still, and all signs point to something powerful building from below. Past Swells, a breathing volcano's history. This isn't Yellowstone's first awakening. 
The park has a long memory, written not in books, but in layers of ash, warped rock, and ancient tree rings. The land has swelled and settled many times before. One of the earliest recorded uplift events began in 1923. Over the next 60 years, the central caldera slowly rose nearly 90 centimeters, about 3 feet. Then, between 1985 and 1995, it sank by 14 centimeters. Scientists started to call this the park's breathing, inhaling and exhaling through the shifting crust. Another major pulse came in 2004, not far from where the current dome is forming. That time, the land rose at a rate of up to 7 centimeters per year. Concern spread, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory issued an advisory. Many feared a possible eruption, but the dome eventually calmed. There was no lava, no blast, just a slow return to balance. Why didn't it erupt? Most likely, it was a hydrothermal event. Water, not magma, was the primary mover, shifting underground and relieving pressure before anything catastrophic could happen. Geological records go back further still. Layers of sediment in lakes, mineral veins in the rocks, and even the shape of old trees tell us that Yellowstone has swelled dozens of times over the past 15,000 years. Some trees show signs of rapid growth followed by stress likely triggered by rising ground and changing soil conditions. These pulses are part of the system's natural rhythm, but each one is different. And this new dome? It's rising faster and in a place that's been quieter until now. What could happen next? Five future scenarios. So what does this rising dome mean? Is it a countdown to catastrophe or just a rumble in Yellowstone sleep? Scientists have outlined several scenarios. Some are reassuring. Others, less so. Scenario 1. Stabilization. This is the most likely outcome. The pressure beneath the dome finds a natural balance. Gases vent. Heat spreads. The uplift slows, then stops. The land stays quiet. There is no eruption. This is just another chapter in Yellowstone's breathing history. Scenario 2. Subsidence. Instead of rising, the dome might begin to fall. If underground fluids or gases find escape routes, perhaps through new fractures or hydrothermal vents, the pressure drops and the ground settles. Some areas already show hints of this. Scenario 3. Increased hydrothermal activity. New steam vents might open, geysers could erupt more often or in new places, and hot springs may shift or disappear. While dramatic, these changes often help relieve pressure letting the volcano vent before anything bigger happens. Scenario 4. A hydrothermal explosion. Now we enter more dangerous territory. If superheated water gets trapped beneath the surface, it can flash to steam with explosive force. Yellowstone has seen this before. One blast created a crater over a mile wide in Mary Bay. These explosions are rare, localized, but potentially deadly. Scenario 5. A magmatic eruption. This is the worst-case scenario and the least likely. It could break through if magma continues rising and can't release its pressure through vents or hot springs. But the data doesn't support that now. No massive sulfur spikes, no long-period quakes, no large-scale gas release. Still, nature doesn't always follow our models. The dome is growing, and while the odds of an eruption remain low, they aren't zero. Yellowstone is changing. The only question is, into what? Global clues. Other volcanoes that did this too. Yellowstone isn't alone. Across the world, other volcanoes have shown similar signs. Dome-shaped uplifts, rising pressure, and eerie quiet. Most didn't erupt, but all were watched carefully. Take the Long Valley Caldera in California. Between 1979 and 1984, it rose nearly half a meter. People braced for an eruption, but it never came. The dome eventually settled, a tense moment in geologic time that passed without disaster. In 2022, the Taupo volcano in New Zealand experienced uplift and seismic activity. Again, there was no eruption, just a visible reminder that the Earth moves even when it stays silent. Campi Flegre in Italy is perhaps the most dramatic. Since the 1950s, the ground has risen by over 4 meters, more than 13 feet. It sits beneath a crowded urban area near Naples. And yet, despite decades of swelling, no major eruption has occurred since the 1500s. 
But not every dome stays quiet forever. In the Galapagos, Sierra Negra's uplift grew for over a decade before it finally erupted in 2018. The signs were there, but not every bulge means disaster. These cases offer perspective. Uplift doesn't always mean doom, but it does mean something is changing below. And Yellowstone? It's part of that global pattern, restless, rising, and watched. What experts say, calm warnings, careful watching. The world's top volcano experts aren't sounding the alarm, but aren't ignoring Yellowstone either. Dr. Elizabeth Warren of the USGS describes the situation as significant but not alarming. The land is rising faster than usual, and gases are escaping at a higher rate, but not in the pattern that typically signals an imminent eruption. It's strange, yes, unsettling even, but not yet dangerous. Still, not all voices agree on how relaxed we should be. Dr. Vivian Rodriguez of the International Volcanological Association urges more caution. The dome's rapid growth, unusual location in the northeastern section of the caldera, and the uptick in micro-earthquakes all point to a shift in Yellowstone's usual behavior. This isn't its typical rhythm, she warns, and when a giant changes its rhythm, we listen. A recent survey of 40 volcanologists offers some clarity. About 70% believe the dome will either stabilize or shrink. Roughly 25% expect an increase in hydrothermal activity, maybe even small steam explosions. Just 5% see any chance of a magma-driven eruption in the next decade. That should be reassuring. But even the optimists agree that this requires vigilance. Yellowstone isn't erupting, but it's active, and it's changing. Dr. James Chen from MIT frames it best. We're witnessing a rare moment in geologic time. Whether it fizzles or builds, this will reshape how we understand supervolcanoes. Because Yellowstone doesn't announce itself in fire and fury, it whispers through rising ground, subtle heat, and the deep silence of something ancient, shifting slowly beneath our feet. The ground is shifting, the instruments see it, scientists hear it. But this isn't cause for panic, it's a call for awareness. Yellowstone doesn't roar, it murmurs, something deep, ancient, and alive is stirring below. Maybe it fades, maybe it grows. Either way, the earth is speaking, and we should listen. Sometimes the most urgent warnings arrive quietly, through silence, not fire. Stay alert, stay grounded, stay curious.